kind of quiet uh, from your end these these last few months. You've been out there getting better. Yeah, of course. You know, uh, I had to make sure I took care of my hand, healed up, and um, just got back in there. You know, as quick as I can. Make sure I'm healthy and 100% and ready to go. Is it too late to close the gap on guys like Uriah Faber uh, that have great wrestling that blends in with their jujitsu? Like, is it too too late in your career to get as good at them at that, and rather the focus just be on not getting to the ground so that they can use their strengths? Or can a guy like yourself, early 30s, still get as good as them, even threaten them on the ground? Yeah, definitely. You know, I, still, I believe I still, I'm, I'm, I'm in my prime, and I'm still have a lot. I have a lot of energy, and, and you know, a lot to learn. So I'm still working on that. You know, getting better in the, on the ground and getting better at what they're what they're good at. So you know, stepping up my wrestling, stepping up my jiu jitsu. You know, and and hit favor with something that he's never seen before. You know, with the striker. Are you impressed with the way he's become better at striking? Uh, favor, favor, you know, he, he, every, every fight's different. Sometimes he comes out and, you know, wants to bang a little, and sometimes he'll just come out and take you down and submit you. So, you know, you never know with favor. He's been around for so long. He knows every everything. So I think, you know, who, I won't be surprised if he wants to come out and strike a little bit and then try to shoot, or I won't be surprised if he comes and just straight takes him down. So, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to be ready for anything he brings, and, and it's going to be a great fight. Friend. Your first fight was in 2008, and by that time, Uriah Faber was already the champ in the WEC. He was defending. Did you ever imagine you would you could be facing a guy like that at some point in your career? And does it almost make it cooler to to face somebody who would probably go down as a Hall of Famer later? Uh, yeah. I mean, I really didn't think about it when I started fighting, but as I got closer and better and started winning more fights, I was like, "Hey, I might end up fighting this guy one day. That'd be a dream come true," you know. No matter what happens, you know, if I win, if you win, no matter what, that, you know, that has to be one of the best moments in my life and my career to ever fight Uriah Faber, you know, one of the most notable guys in the MMA in the UFC. So it's definitely going to be, you know, one of my dreams to come true to fight Uriah Faber. Francisco, you're both ranked at the top of 135 pounds, you know, in the top 15, 20, 10, whatever your rankings are that you look at. But a lot of people are perplexed at this matchup because Faber has been at the top for so long and he's so popular. He doesn't really ever fall out of contention of fighting for a world title despite the fact he's come up short on a couple. You dropped your last fight versus Takeya Mizugaki. So people out there uh, are, are even feeling like you're maybe just a tune-up for Uriah Faber. How how do you answer those detra detractors? Uh, there's, you know, there's always those doubters. You know, there's always those those comments and, you know, those ifs and what's and this is why that he's doing it or fighting him. But, you know, all I have to say is just, you know, come December 8th, just put on a show, just do what I do best and just fight. There's one thing that these, a lot of people that don't know or have never seen me fight is if you're fighting me, I guarantee you I will hit you, I don't know how many times, but you will get hit. And if that one punch catches you, it's lights out.